Hey guys, I want to walk through kind of where we're at in this whole process, what we've got, what we've done, and uh, just kind of the overall process of where we're at so far. So let's just take a look. Got the liquid force uh, foil here that I got. And I got a, a little surfboard and I strapped the, uh, the motor system on it. So we've got uh, some power on it to uh, test with some thrust and see what kind of power we're getting with different props. But on the workbench here, I have got kind of, uh, kind of the progress of what we've done in 3D printer, what we've moved on to props and uh, control panels uh, or uh, ESCs and wiring and all that stuff. So let me just kind of go over where we kind of started with 3D printing. Originally, um, the plan was to do what Pacific Meister was doing, which was using aluminum tube. And I kind of uh, took it a, a little couple steps in a different direction, but more or less we ended up using an aluminum tube. The tube that he was using was uh, a much thinner one. It was about half this thickness and it's not a standard size aluminum tube. So, and it, it takes six to eight weeks to get a piece of it and you pay a premium for a little chunk of aluminum. So what I did was I got a standard size, which is uh, a little bit thicker and it's the same inside diameter. It's just the outside is thicker, meaning you get much better cooling for the motor and it allows us to put threads in it and uh, we can thread the parts on. So this first 3D part that we made was simply a test piece to make sure it goes in and it threads in properly. And what we've done is we did a left-hand thread, which is the opposite of what you're used to because when the motor and the prop torque and there's a lot of uh, twisting, we want the threads to go tighter and lock on. Obviously, if uh, we did regular threads, it would unwind and the whole thing would blow apart in the water. So this was just a 3D test uh, of the uh, actual threads. And then we moved on to our first piece here now. This one here actually goes and fits and would, would thread in and inside the groove, this little groove right in here would be where we put an O-ring and it threads in and tightens. And then this outside piece here is where we would uh, be mounting, there'd be a cult, uh, um, there'd be a coupler here and we'd have either the gear reduction drive or we'd go straight on to where the propeller assembly is. And so this part evolved many times. We've got uh, one version here, our first rough kind of go. And then we did some fine tuning, trying to thin it out, streamline it even more. And then we got to another one. And these two, this is actually, this one here is for direct drive. It's got a different bolt hole, goes straight onto the motor, where this one here has actually got a reduction gear fitting with four bolt systems. So we can put a three or five reduction uh, gear drive, which more or less, I've got one right here. This reduction drive has got a little tiny edge on it. So more or less it fits and, and sits flush and bolts right in. And it, it actually protects it, saves it even more from having any wiggle. So it locks itself in. And so there's a difference between reduction gear drive piece and direct drive, which ideally I'd love to just be able to go direct drive. And uh, I'm setting some uh, props and some setups for that to save money and, uh, and try to, uh, uh, just make a smaller more compact unit so here is more or less closer to a final step before we got to some solid printing you can see the the o-ring in there it's a black square cut o-ring and the way that works is if we go over here obviously prototyping you end up spending a fortune on you can't just buy one o-ring you got to buy 20 and it costs 20 bucks for shipping uh, let me just see here here's a square o-ring let me just show you here let me just uh, so, so here's a square o-ring, put it under the light, you can see square corners. So it fits down, I don't think this is the exact, oh, maybe it is. So this one fits down and it slides right down into that groove. And then when the aluminum tube threads in, it has a nice, uh, a little bit of a, a finer point edge here. And uh, it sticks into the rubber and gives you a nice seal. Now keep in mind, these are all 3D printed on, on fairly low quality. so. It's not perfectly smooth, but this is for prototyping purposes going forward. So after we got that one piece done, this here is the prop assembly, and we've got a space here for a shaft seal, and did another shaft seal space in the back, in the inside as well. So if it does get warm and pressure builds up in there, potentially this seal here would actually push even harder and create a seal. Whereas if you just did a seal on the outside, if there was pressure buildup, it could pop and blow the seal out. So this here is pretty heavy. This was 100% fill, this one. Um, you can see inside we've got an O-ring seal 
which is for a round o-ring and these here actually thread in and out this is uh, this is the piece we just talked about right here and if we just unthread this this here is the same piece so this is version 2 the o-ring is inside and we've got bolt holes for the prop assembly and the way the prop assembly works is this here is a smaller prop which I'm going to try with direct drive it's a four blade and more or less this this slides in you take this coupler off but it slides in and, and bolts down into that system so you have a small direct drive this here is an 80 millimeter um, uh, prop um, we've got a couple different setups different pitches for that for different rpms uh, also some 110 millimeter props uh, but anyways that's that's the next piece that we developed and then we had to do the these little more or less uh, 3d printed coupler parts that hold the the reduction gear this one you can see it's got the groove reduction gear slides in there and this ends up bolting on there and it goes to the motor and the prop would be off this end here so we took a obviously prototyping you go through a ton of parts this is just a, a little some of them we've obviously got more than this but eventually these things really evolved into you can see the difference between the sizes here by the time we're said and done this is a high quality piece uh, finished and full and uh, so we kind of worked our way to that eventually got to this is another one we did some modifications just trying to make sure we get a pro proper fit as we're kind of playing around but uh, this black stuff is stronger than this this white stuff this is like a special material and then we get over to our aluminum tube that we were showing before obviously uh, this whole thing threads in here we've got a shaft seal on the uh, outside and if I just if I thread this tight it's got a nice rubber seal it's a nice you can feel the rubber squish and turn and uh, and lock into place but more or less let's just uh, take this end off here got lots of long threads Woo, just so that there's extra strength I don't want any threads ripping out um, the inside obviously this is 3d printed but uh, you can see where the other the other shaft seal is going to go in there and uh, it's threaded on so inside this would be if I was to lay it out you'd have prop assembly bolts on there this ends up fitting more or less in there and then one of these parts fits well, there's a motor this would be a motor these two pieces end up fitting more or less in here so it ends up there's a whole bunch of parts in there obviously if we can remove this the reduction drive that'll save a ton of weight ton of parts it'll reduce two of these parts and it'll uh, overall it'll just make the unit much more uh, efficient and shorter in, in my opinion now this side is all sealed with the the o-rings with the uh, shaft seals the other side I use this giant um, rubber kind of bung cork that uh, more or less when you slide the nose cone on this here slides inside so it'll slide right inside and I ended up uh, with another one I drilled one two three holes for the three uh, motor wires to come out and then you slide it in and then you, you tighten this and as you tighten this the rubber squishes and this is a very specific one it's a high quality one it's for uh, 150 psi which this thing will never run that much pressure so it works very well very watertight and uh, we could probably actually make it smaller we could probably cut this in half and, and squish the whole thing right down to make it even more streamlined it's pretty big and it's pretty heavy uh, but uh, one step at a time key is to get a motor that's running very efficient lots of power and a good control system for it so moving on forward I started off with a VESC I wanted to uh, kind of it's the most affordable kind of really nice power system I ended up using the vest for a little bit kind of played with it I'm not a real programmer and I soldered on the connections I tried it a bunch of times and I uh, spent hours and hours on forums it works I did uh, I did coat it with uh, conform uh, conformal coating so the whole thing is waterproof you could pretty much run dip this running and running into water and it would work and I, I put a new plastic clear coat over it so I took it all apart make sure it's watertight but um, anyway I just didn't find it all that easy to use and it kept cutting out on me when um, 
when I, I guess I had some cir circuit limits kind of set. Long story short is I'm not a programmer and that's out of my league and I struggled with it. So then I just went to the good old uh, C-King out of the box, pretty much ready to go. The only thing it's not ready out of the box is uh, reverse still works on your trigger. So I don't want reverse. So I bought this programming card. It's like $7 or something and you just plug it in and you program this, uh, the CSC to remove the reverse. And you can actually adjust the, the power curves uh, for the throttle as well. So you can, um, you, you can really adjust this, uh, this thing pretty well. And I put this on yesterday onto the, onto the board over here just to try it out to see what the throttle was like. And man, night and day difference over uh, what, what this was. And this was, this was because I didn't program it properly. There's a, a bunch of tabs and you know hundreds of settings. And that's again, it's not my thing. So now we're onto this. It's easy, plug and play out of the box. Uh, I got this so I can remove the reverse. Uh, moving forward, I kind of bought a uh, waterproof switch. It's, it's a, actually a really, really nice one. It's a quality one. It wasn't that cheap, but I want to put it in the box. It's got a nice blue ring that lights up when it's powered on and um, just easy to turn it on and off. But, you know, don't need it to look pretty. I'm kind of prototyping, so that don't really need that. I don't want it at this point. And then I got into a bunch of these waterproof boxes. These are for the water case where the batteries are. You slide the wires through, this thing bolts through the, the shell of the waterproof box. And as you tighten this on, those rubber seals inside, uh, make it so you can have waterproof holes in, the, in your box with your wire, wires running in. Gone through a bunch of different connectors, uh, shaft seals, some other bearings, things like that. I made a 60, 60 amp battery uh, connector here. Um, go on the forums when you're talking about with these big batteries and you're dealing with water if they start to short out they could end up being uh, catch on fire have a big meltdown and uh, you don't really want that so don't know if 60 amp is going to be enough I uh, was playing with the motor yesterday in the water a bit which I'm going to get some uh, some footage of and I was drawing about 30 30 uh, 38 amps I think on full full throttle trying to drag me through on this tiny little surfboard through the water I know once you get up on a foil, it'll drop off dramatically. So this 60 amp could work. If I open this up, let me just, there you go, you can see, you can see the big, big fuse in it, 60 amp. So I'm hoping I can get away with this or maybe get a stronger one just for safety reasons. If uh, something ever gets drowned, it'll short it, it'll cut itself out and save the batteries. Uh, obviously a bunch of connectors to run in parallel series, uh, some battery Velcros, lots of parts. I got lots of, you lots of different connectors. Um, one thing you realize is you get these connectors and you think they're going to be good and the quality is really poor and then you realize they're only rated for like 40 amps. Meanwhile we could be drawing potentially you know 130 amps. So um, kind of some of the stuff's garbage, a bunch of wire and uh, so that's where we're at in the grand scheme of things right now. So we are in the middle of waiting for a couple new props, very similar to this assembly coming here, the same, same type of assembly, just different uh, uh, pitch. Uh, so we can go direct drive and, and ramp up the RPMs. And um, yeah, we'll be off to the races. Oh, the other thing too is really important for anyone building their own. When you put your motor into the aluminum tube, you wanna make sure you get thermal paste. And, um, there's a big difference between the quality of thermal paste. I know uh, Pacific Meister used one and you look, up, uh, you look it up on Amazon, it's really expensive. Uh, this stuff is, not ex is pretty expensive too. It's still 40 or $50 Canadian plus shipping. It's Canadian made, but this stuff has got the highest thermal rating. It's, it's about five or six times better than what uh, is on Amazon. And uh, really good company. You can just order it right from their website. Uh, I think it's Omega. And um, yeah, anyways, you want to make sure you get good pace because motors can get hot very, very quickly. And uh, the wiring I used is simply, uh, it's eight gauge, super thick. It doesn't fit a lot of connections. Uh, you got to uh, work at it and get uh, a bunch of these different thermal shrink, shrink wrap covers to go over to cover everything. But anyways, that's where we're at in the grand scheme of things. And I'm just about to put the, uh, the motor back on the hydro foil and give it a rip with uh, the new setup now that I can actually get some power with this this new one it's about four times more powerful than what I was getting with the VESC just because I couldn't get it programmed properly but so I'm really pumped to actually get out on the foil and, uh, and start ripping it up anyway that's it for now we'll talk to you in a bit